All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about drawing functions in OpenCV using Python. So first we're gonna talk about what are drawing functions, go into why do we need drawing functions, how do drawing functions work, and then jump into some coding examples. Okay, so what are drawing functions? So we have a couple of different types. Here we have a circle. So circle I have here to draw the eyes, I have the ellipse function, I have the line function, and then I have the rectangle function, which I'm using to draw the border. I have my polygon function, which I'm using to draw the triangle. And then I have my text function, which I use to draw a tiger, okay? So why do we need drawing functions? So one of the main things you might need drawing functions for is for image annotation. So maybe you're doing some deep learning or AI and you want to label some of the things, objects in your images. So you could do that for image annotation. It could be for visualization. So maybe you're visualizing something and then uh, you want to draw something to um, help, help explain the visuals that you're looking at. Maybe you have some data labeling that you're doing, which is similar to image annotation, but this one is more specific to labeling parts of your image. So there's a lot of different applications and just depends on what you're doing. Okay, here I'm just kind of doing it for fun, just drawing over the image. So there's a lot of different things you can do. So how do drawing functions work? The way it works is you modify the pixels uh, and then they replace the pixels with your desired value. So here I'm using all white. So I'm re pretty much replacing the pixel values with uh, white pixels, and then um, my program will specify the start and end locations for the pixels. Okay, so let's jump into some coding. Okay, so here we have our demo program as usual. So we're gonna import some of the main things that we'll be using. So import CV2 as CV, import OS for a reading file, import matplotlib.py pyplot as plt for some plotting and then import numpy as np. Okay, so we're gonna call our function drawing functions for our demo. And then we have our if name equals main and we'll call our drawing functions. So inside of here, we're gonna read our file. So root os.get CWD and then our path. We're gonna have os.path.join and then pass in roots. And our folder is demo images cute pics dot j cute pick one dot jpeg. And then we're gonna read it. So cv dot um, read and we're gonna pass in our image path. And then here we're gonna say image RGB to convert it cv.cvt color. And we're gonna pass an image and then our code is gonna be color bgr to RGB. And again, I'm using that because matplotlib uh, takes RGB. So plt.figure and then I have plt.show. Um, and then plt.show. So this is useful because when I'm running this program, um, I may want to know the exact pixel locations. So, you know, let's say I'm drawing some whiskers. I wanna know what's my starting point. If I'm drawing a point on the eye, I wanna know the starting point. So that's what I like about the matplotlib. So I already got some of the pixels values uh, written down for this demo. So make our lives a little bit easier. So first we have our cv.line function. This draws a line, we pass in our image, and then we have some start and end points. So we're gonna start at 366 and then end at 402. So it takes a tuple, so that's, that's the format. And then my end point will be 197 and then 507. And then the pixel value, I'm using all white. So here, because I'm using white for a lot of things, I'm gonna create a variable called white here, just so I don't have to type this out every single time. And then the line thickness, I will choose two. 
And then we need our, we're gonna plot this. So we have our function cv dot um, show, and we're gonna pass in the name of our image, which we're gonna call um, img, and then we'll pass an image. Then we need our weight key. So cv dot weight key zero. So if I run this, we should see a line that will represent the whisker. This is the default image, and ta-da, you have a whisker. And here, I'm actually not going to be plotting it every time. We just want to see the result. So I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. So that was for our line. And then now maybe we want to check out some of the other drawing functions. So I'm going to have RCD for row, column, and depth, because I'm going to use this for some of the information later, as we'll see. And then we're going to have some offset that we're going to set to 10. And then what we want to do now is draw a rectangle for the border. So I'm going to do cv.rectangle. And this rectangle function will take an input as an image. And then I'm going to use offset, which is offset from the borders. And then use the, the dimension of the image to offset in the other direction. So two in one corner. So C minus offset, and then the other one's gonna be row minus offset, okay? And then my pixel value, I'm gonna use white, and then pass in four, because I want to have a thick border. And if I run this, we should see the new image with a thick border here, okay? And I could change the border thickness if I want to make it even more pronounced. I could change it to eight, and you can see I have a thicker border, okay? so that's. Now my kitty has two elements on there, a whisker and a border. So now maybe we want to play with the circle function. So we have cv.circle, and this takes in an image and then a center point. I'm gonna put it near the eye, so it's gonna be 496, and the other pixel is 325. And then the radius, I'm gonna pass in 10, and then the color white, line thickness negative one, 10, negative one and the negative one means that it's gonna fill in the circle. Otherwise, if it's not negative one, if I do like one, it's gonna be a non-filled circle, like this, okay? So I prefer it filled here, so I'm gonna leave it as negative one. And then we have our ellipse function, so cv.ellipse. We're gonna pass an image, and then the start point is a tuple. 415 and 439. I'm going to put it somewhere near the mouth. And then this next one is the axis. So you have your major and minor axes, which will say how big the circle is. And then you have a start angle. You have an angle, which is the angle of your lips. You have a start angle and then the end angle. And then the color, I'm going to do white again. And the line thickness, negative one, means a fill. So if I run this function, you should see my 180 degrees ellipse for the mouth. It's all good and working. And then next one, let's check out the polylines. So we have cv.polylines, and then we'll pass an image. Uh, we're gonna need some points first. So to create our points, uh, we're gonna do pts equals mp.array. And then here we're gonna pass in some points, which are the points of the triangle. So we have 234 and then 211. And then our next set of points is gonna be 214 and then 71. And then I have 322 and 125. Okay, so these are my points. And then this actually takes in a list of points. So it's casting my MP array as a list. And then I have is close, meaning I'll close the contour, pass in white, and then thickness, I'm gonna choose three to make a thick three for the years. And you should see a triangle pop up for the years. So that's all good. And then we have a text that we could put, cv.put text. This takes an image as input, the name of the text, tiger, which is the name of our kitty. And then the origin of the text, we're gonna put 650. So origin is bottom left corner. I'm gonna put two, 650 by 278. Again, it's a tuple. And then you have cv.font. This is a font type that it's using. 
Um, you can kind of play around with which one you like. It's going to choose this one because it's a pretty popular one. And then we have white, um, pass in four. So the other one was the font scale for color and then thickness. And then line type CV dot line AA. It's something that I know works well, but you could play with the other ones to see which one you like. So if I run this, we just see the name show up, Tiger. Okay, so that pretty much shows all the main tools that you might need. And if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.